Villisca in the early 1900s was about three times the size of what it is now. It had two full-time motels. At one point, there were 52 retail stores down, like wine shops, cigar shops, music instrument shops. Big train town, very Victorian. Uh, every day you'd have like 100 people on and off the train. And then the murders happened and people left. On the night of June 9th, 1912, the Moore family attended the Children's Day service at the Presbyterian Church in Villisca, Iowa. Joe Moore and his wife, Sarah, and their four children, Herman, Catherine, Boyd, and Paul, age 11 to five. Lena and Ina Stillinger, 11 and eight years old, were friends of Catherine Moore. The Stillinger girls also attended the Children's Day service with the Moore family. Once the service ended, the girls got permission to stay at the Moore residence for the night. Sometime during the night, probably between 12 and 1, but that's somewhat of an estimate, a killer or killers came in and with the axe that they found in the backyard, they killed all eight of those people. They left the axe there, they didn't steal anything. So next day, Mary Peckham, the neighbor, is up in her backyard at 4 a.m. doing her laundry, and by 8.30, she's just like, something's not right. The shades were all pulled down. Nobody was out in the yard. So she went over and tried to rouse the family, couldn't do that, and she called Joe's brother, Ross, who was a druggist. He ran a drugstore in Villisca. He came down and opened the house with a skeleton key, went in the front door, the west door off the porch into the front parlor, went across the front parlor, pushed open that door. There were two figures lying in bed, completely covered. The covers were pulled over their heads and faces. But he saw blood on the back of the bedstead and knew that there was something that had happened that was terrible. And so he left. They called the marshal. Marshal Horton came. The authorities find the moors up. You get 1,500 plus towns, people trampling through immediately, looking at it. But before that, they wrote down a lot of clues, I guess. Mirrors were covered, half-eaten food at the table, raw bacon laying on the floor, oil lamps at the edge of beds, tops of their dressers, a lot of weird stuff placed around. And detectives questioned people for five years. We have no idea what happened. I mean, it's Iowa's oldest cold case at this point. The investigation began immediately, and rumors spread throughout the nation, drawing thousands of people to the tiny town of Villisca. It generated a huge uproar. It's in the New York Times, for example, a little squib about it. People flocked in. Uh, they estimated the town was 2,000 2, in the morning. They estimated it was 10,000 by night. Uh, people would come in on trains. People would come in in cars. People came in in buggies. Reporters came from all over, detectives came from all over, and uh, there was an intense investigation for the first week. I think the investigation was exactly what you should not do in a murder investigation. In fact, the state of Iowa put together like an er early version of like a group of investigators that would handle this instead of the town locals, which they didn't know what they were doing. You know, they didn't know anything about fingerprints or was there no DNA or any thoughts of that? Skin cells under fingernails was a thing in uh, London, but that's a long way from Villisca, you know. I think emotions were running high, nobody knew what to do, it become the crime of the century. You get every wannabe detective from the whole country flooding Iowa, wanting to be the one to solve it, to have that clout. They're coming up with outrageous suspects, falsifying evidence, stepping on each other's toes. I mean, it was just, a mess from day one. It didn't take long before people all over the nation began to speculate. Who committed the murders of the Moore family? The first suspicion was it was one of a serial killer's work. It was a series of murders. There was a murder, murder in Colorado Springs in September of 1911 in Monmouth, Illinois. Two weeks after that in Ellsworth, Kansas, two weeks after that 
and then in Payola, Kansas, a axe murder, a whole family was killed. It was a weapon of opportunity. It was picked up at the scene. Uh, they left, they stole nothing. They left uh, the house, just disappeared into the night, and then ended up in Villisca. That was the favorite idea. A second theory was that there was a state senator, F.F. F. Jones, who he was a direct competitor to uh, Joe Moore, who had been his salesman in his implement store that was associated with him, with the hardware store. And uh, they were known to be bitter enemies. They would cross the street so they didn't have to walk by each other. Everyone in town knew that. The majority of people then and now in Villisca, I believe, still believed that Jones was behind it. Consequently, the grand jury did not indict Jones. One of them said, we got to look at that crazy preacher over in Nebraska. And that was Preacher Kelly. He was in Villisca the night of the murder. He was preaching at two country churches that summer every other week. So every two weeks he came to Villisca. He was suspected of peeking in windows in most towns. He also had sent a bloody shirt that week of the murder to a council bluffs laundry. He was living in a little town of Macedonia in western Iowa. And he talked to people on the train the morning of the murder, talking about the murder. And the murder wasn't discovered until three hours after he had left town that morning. During the investigation, F.F. F. Jones and Preacher Kelly were not the only ones being questioned. Hundreds of rumors began to spread across town, all pointing in different directions. Townspeople began to wonder if they could even trust their closest friends and family. I wish more people knew about the range of suspects. The one thing that drives me completely insane is everybody focuses on the same suspects, and I can see why, F.F. Jones, state senator, drama, scandal, you know, they all have interesting backstories. There were hundreds of suspects. Everybody in town was a suspect at some point. About all of them was just gossip, just talk. Many people in Villisca at one time or another, they were at least mentioned by someone else as being, they could have done it. Founders of Villisca christened their town with a native word, meaning pretty place, or so they thought. Years later, they discovered the true meaning, evil spirit. This name resonates years later as Villisca residents still seek answers. It was a decade long period in, of upset and the community was damaged by the arguments and ill feeling that developed from it. Nobody locked their doors in town before this happened. And right after this happened, the hardware stores sold out of door locks and window bars. I know I've heard older citizens talk about their parents hiring farm hands to sleep in front of their door on the floor. Families would move into one house together. Aunts, uncles, grandparents, they'd all sleep in one room together. They'd have the farm hand on the floor in case the ax man came. I heard a story of the country school. Kid was walking to school. He saw a guy carrying an axe over his shoulder across the field. Told the teacher they barricaded all the windows, waited for him to pass by, canceled school that day. That's like 20 some years after the fact. So it, it put the town into hysteria. It's like, who's next? Who was it? So now you're instantly thinking, it's one of our friends, one of the people we know in town, a murderer. What was once the site of one of Iowa's most brutal tragedies is now one of Iowa's most popular tourist attractions, bringing hundreds of paranormal investigators and true crime enthusiasts to the scene each year. Over the years, the people who bought the house and opened it, then it became a paranormal site. There was a lot of groups, paranormal groups, that came and investigated, stayed overnight, and so on, as is still. The house is still open, and for a fee, you can spend the night in the house. Villisca today is a very, very close-knit, small town where everybody knows everybody. When I moved here 20 years ago, the cop quit. We have no cop at all. 
and we haven't needed one. Over the summer, a kid found a wallet in the street with over 4,000 in cash in it. The guy who lost the wallet got all of it back. Like, that would never happen. But then, a lot of gossip, like any small town. But it makes me wonder, like, hearing the gossip and stuff happening today, it's like it's probably all the same. You know, in 1912, not much has probably changed. I'd say the only way the town is affected today is just by only being known as the axe murder town. <laughs> you know, everybody will see someone and know that they're here for the house. Although this case may never be solved, this tragedy is used today as a learning opportunity in hopes that others don't suffer the same fate as the Moore family and Stillinger girls. We do a lot of continuing education classes for Supreme Court judges, law enforcement, forensic schools, colleges. When I first came here 20 years ago, people were threatening to picket the tours. And I was just, I didn't understand that because I'm a history buff. And when I, I went to school in Charleston, South Carolina, the history we were taught in school, not even close to reality. So I started going to historic spots because I was like, why are we being lied to with this false narrative? And I quickly realized, you know, I've never been anywhere in this country where they go, this is where happy things happen. Gettysburg, Salem, Trail of Tears, Plantations, even Mount Rushmore. It's all horrible, but it's history. And we have to remember that, otherwise we're gonna repeat it. And I've seen this as, these poor kids lost their life. They should have fell in love and played and had fun and grew up, but that was robbed from them. And this town should never forget what happened here. And then if it can serve to train forensic profilers that come here, I think it's super important. Yeah, and I see their point. I hate that it happened. I hate this place probably more than anyone, but it happened. And now we gotta learn from it and grow from it. Thank you.